Here's the potassium. It's uh, an incredibly important uh, nutrient that uh, people aren't talking about. And it should be talked about because, well, it's one of the most potent uh, minerals found in your cells. Potassium and magnesium are the top two nutrients that are found inside your cell. And if potassium or magnesium are deficient inside your cell, the cell-to-cell -cell communication goes down. And if that cell-to-cell -cell communication goes down, it's like you trying to call your, your significant other and they're not picking up their cell phone. How annoying is that, right? You make a call to your loved one, why aren't they answering? Well, if your potassium levels are low, your cells are not communicating to each other. It's that important. 99% of women, yes, probably you, are deficient in potassium. 99%. That, that's that's mind-blowing to me. I, I didn't even think that was possible. And 90% of men, according to some research, some other research says 74%, of men are deficient in potassium. About five grams, five grams, that's 5,000 milligrams or 50,000 micrograms. And, and again, put this perspective of folate. We give, we talk a lot about methylation here. We talk about how important folate is for your homocysteine and all that. And we're talking micrograms, 400 micrograms. Yet the RDA for potassium is five grams, which is basically 10, 12 plus that of the folate RDA. So to me, that's kind of mind blowing. And a lot of that is stored inside your cell. And in order to get the potassium inside your cell, requires energy. Yeah. So you, you can't just get potassium inside your cell. It requires 40% of your body's energy from ATP at rest to just get your potassium and your magnesium inside your cell. So if you have chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia or you're just generally tired and you go out and train, you are going to get more fatigue because 40% of your energy at rest is just to be is just used to move potassium and magnesium inside your cell. And also what happens is you get more spasming. You get muscle cramps. And so if you are training or you're cycling or you're lifting or you're running or you're swimming and you get cramping after, you've blown your ATP uh, resources to such an extent that your muscles cannot do what they do. And so a common sign of potassium deficiency is muscle spasms. We always hear that it's magnesium deficiency with muscle spasms, don't we? We always hear that. And I, I'm the one to say that too. It's both. You need both magnesium and potassium. And so that is really, really key to understand because a lot of us are not getting enough of either in our diet. There's talk that over 50% of people are magnesium deficient. And now we're talking over 90% of people are potassium deficient. So let's say you're taking all the magnesium that you're, you know, you're taking all the best magnesiums. You're taking magnesium uh, malate from seeking health. You're getting some improvement, but not great. You've been taking optimal electrolyte. That's definitely helping. But you look at your diet, your list of foods, and you're not getting enough potassium you add potassium into your diet, boof, your muscle cramps start really dissipating. Right here. So one little scoop provides 500 milligrams and there's 120 servings in here. So a tiny scoop, I mean, I'm talking tiny. So I have big hands, but that's it, okay? That little guy. So. When you take potassium, read the suggested use. Very important. You have to take potassium with food. I almost said ideally. 
but no, you take it with food. And 500 milligrams is safe to take without food. And so that's why I formulated it at that amount. If you eat a massive amount of potassium rich foods, you cannot hurt yourself. You can't because the insulin firing helps pull potassium out of the blood and get it in the cell. Catecholamines like norepinephrine, cortisol help get potassium out of the blood and into the cell. But too much potassium in the blood is dangerous. And so you need to get it absorbed quickly. And food does that. The action of insulin does that. So make sure you take the potassium powder with food. The first time I took optimal potassium powder from the sample from the our manufacturer, I couldn't believe it like huge buzz in my head. But it was a consistent buzz. It was like a caffeine buzz without the jitteriness or without the anxiety. It was amazing. And I gave it to Matthew, my 13-year-old boy, and he was he was beside himself too. He's like, holy crap, dad. I feel like I want to go run right now. And he had this huge smile on his face. Blood test is great if you're severely deficient. If you're severely deficient, blood test is great. You know, an RBC potassium is probably going to be the best. So red blood cell potassium, because you want potassium in your red blood cell. So RB potassium could be the best one. That's going to be expensive and timely in a snapshot in time. So if you eat a high potassium meal one day and maybe for a week, and then let's say you're not doing that, then you're going to have issues. And uh, then you're going to be potassium deficient. Just keep in mind when you order labs, it's a snapshot. It's not you every single day. It's a window in time. Now, if you're eating the same thing all the time and you're doing your same things all the time, it might be more accurate. But if you're a person who has random activities, you're exercising, you know, maybe on Mondays and Fridays or what have you, or you just came back from a trip and you ate different types of food, you know, or you got sick and you depleted yourself of a bunch of nutrients, just keep in mind that lab testing is a snapshot in time. Many reasons why people respond unfavorably to folate or B12 is because they're potassium deficient. Why? What, do, what does folate do? One of the things that folate does is support your methylation. But the other thing folates do, like folinic acid, what it does is it helps blood cell formation, white and red. So white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, neutrophils, all these, your immune system, okay? And your cells need potassium. And every time you have a new cell dividing, and they keep dividing, and, right? What's happening? What is happening if someone takes folate or vitamin B12 and because they're anemic and they feel worse from it, but their anemia kind of goes away, but they're like, doc, I'm super tired. I'm still tired. Their cells are dividing. What is happening every time a cell is dividing and they feel worse? What could be happening if they're already potassium deficient, yet their cells are deficient in potassium? What's happening? This is key. Doctors don't think of this. They miss it all the time. I talked about this in 2013. And I just realized I should bring it up again. If someone is potassium deficient, they take uh, folate or vitamin B12 in order to support cell division for red blood cell growth or, you know, you know, or anemias and so on. What's going to happen to their potassium even more? It's splitting potassium in half each time. So less and less and less. So you are going to get more and more and more potassium deficient with each cell division. 99 milligrams is the FDA limit in your multivitamin in capsules. You need five grams a day. You need 5,000 milligrams. You need 50 times the RDA in capsules. 
you are not going to be taking 50 servings of your multivitamin every day because you would be horribly sick. Okay? You'd be horribly constipated, you'd be horribly sick, you'd be stressed out, you would not be feeling good. That is why we have the optimal potassium powder because there is no limit to how much potassium one can get from a powder. The problem is you have to be careful when you take the potassium in a powder to not hurt yourself, which is why I'm very, very clear. Drink with a meal, okay? Drink with a meal. So, and it's one scoop. It tastes good, kids love it. My kids like, dad, can I have another one? I feel great. And what happens when you feel great? You want more. Do not take more than one serving of optimal potassium powder at a time. 